Hello everybody, this is the seventh and final video in a series that I'm doing on how to restore a Stanley bench plane. So far I've covered the bottom, the frog, the iron, the iron cap, the lever cap, and the small parts. This number five was trashed. It was a rust bucket, looked really bad. That mud wasp nest sitting right there, it was firmly attached to the space in front of the, the iron, the frog, and the bottom. There it is. Much better than what it was. The last thing to do, tote and knob. On the more modern plane, Stanley stopped using rosewood. They went to hardwood and put a finish on it that made them look like rosewood. I've done a video on how to re repair and refinish rosewood knobs and tote. This is different. First thing we got to do with this old finish because it's pretty well trashed is remove it. Chemical stripping is an effective way to remove old finishes. I like to use a scraper. Scraping is pretty straightforward. You want to make sure you've got a good burr, burr on your scraper before you start. And if you do, it's going to start to peel that old finish off. Keep in mind while you're scraping that you want to go with the grain as much as possible. It's going to make it easier to put the final finish on. You won't have to be sanding out any scratches if you put scratches in. If you keep your burr good, normally I don't get scratches in the wood. And that's it for the tote. And the knob is done. Now I'm going to sand the tote with a fresh piece of 150 grit sandpaper on a rubber sanding block. The knob I'm going to do a little bit different. Sanding and scraping, you always want to do it with the grain. It's important that when you're sanding that you don't change the profile, all the little curves, the subtle sharp edges. Attention to detail is going to make a better looking tote when you're done. You could sand this all day and the uh, black looking stains, you're never going to get it all out so you just got to know when to quit. Next I'm going to use a brand new fine grit um, sanding sponge. Just like the paper, I'm going to go over the entire outside this is going to help even the tone up just a little bit more. And finally it's on to some 3 odd steel wool. When you're doing the steel wool you're looking at the tote for scratches. If you see them you might have to go back to your sandpaper, sand the scratches out and then hit it up with steel wool to finish it. For sanding knobs, I've got a 3 8 of an inch bolt that's about 5 inches long and I wrap a whole bunch of electrical tape around one end of it. The bolt size matches the hole that's drilled through the knobs and the 3 8 of an inch electrical tape. You wrap enough of it around there so it fits tight inside the hole, the recess that's in the bottom of the knob. The knob goes into a drill press or a hand drill will work too. Where then you use 150 grit paper sanding sponge and steel wool to sand the knob. Just like with the tote, I'm going to start with 150 grit paper. You want to take care not to round over any sharp edges. You want to maintain the original profile. That's got it looking pretty good. And if you don't have a drill press or a hand drill, then it's just sandpaper 
the sanding block and steel wool, do it all by hand. At this point you've got multiple options for finishing them. Some people will just go lacquer clear right over them. I've never done that. I usually try to get them to look back like rosewood again. I have a technique that I've used where I have a rosewood paste stain that's made by Minwax. The problem is that this hardwood will not take a stain. So the only way I can make it work was you put a coat of stain on, give it a coat of lacquer. Put another coat of stain over the lacquer, another coat of lacquer. And keep repeating that over and over and over again. It's very time consuming until you've built up consecutive coats of stain and lacquer until it darkens. And you can actually get it to look like rosewood. Today I'm going to try something I've never done before. If you looked at these things, if you ever had these old totes and knobs, and you see they look like they've been painted with black paint, it's almost pitch black, you can't see you can't see any grain. So given the fact that this is a user, I'm going to go ahead and give something new a try, we're going to see how it works. For this finish, I'm going to start with the black paint first. I've got the tote knob over here in my high-tech paint booth. I'm misting on the black paint but not so thick that I still can't see the grain underneath. So that was a very thin coat. What I'm going to do now is a real light steel wool. I've got three out there. I'm just cleaning up the kind of dusty feeling that you get from the paint. I don't want to take the paint off. I want to keep this dark color and see how it looks. Next, I'm going to apply the Minwax Gel Stain. I've put it on evenly and I'm just going to let it dry without wiping it off. Same thing with the tote. So I was not at all happy with the way that was turning out. I've gone back to my old method. I've got red, red mahogany. And I don't have a lot of stain in this. I'm giving it an even coat over the entire knob. I've already done this about three times. And while this is still wet and thinly applied, I'm going to mist it with spray lacquer and take it over to my fan and dry it fast. And then I'm going to rub it down with a paper towel. After repeating the stain and lacquer ap application several times, this is what I've got. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Now I need to build up maybe four, five, six coats of lacquer on it. After seven coats of lacquer, they're ready for the sanding sponge and some steel wool. The sanding sponge is fine. It's kind of old and worn out and it's some fresh 3 out steel wool. You do not want to be aggressive with the sponge. You're just leveling up the slight uh, short of being perfectly smooth of the lacquer. Very careful on the corners not to go through. Do this all over the tote and the knob. And now I'm on to the steel wool, and again I cannot overstress the importance of multiple coats of lacquer, thin, built up slowly, and then when you're doing this that you don't want to get overly aggressive and go through the finish and have that white wood showing again. I didn't mention it when I was on the tote, but make sure that you sand and steel wool the same direction with the grain. So after the steel wool, I used my air hose, I blew them off. Now I'm buffing them with a, uh, a blue paper towel. And there's what they look like. I mean, that actually looks pretty darn good. The uh, paper towel buffing gives them a nice satin sheen. You can stop right there if you want. They feel good in your hand. Uh, I'm going to put a coat of wax on them, help protect them just a little bit more. And it's going to make them shine a little bit more. If you don't want the extra shine, don't wax them. I'm using Minwax Paste Wax coating the entire tote and knob and I'm going to let it dry. Now 
after the wax dries for a couple minutes you want to wipe it off And I finish it by buffing it up with a microfiber towel. So when I first started putting the finish on these two pieces, I didn't think it was going to work. I resorted back to my old method of building up layers of stain followed by lacquer. And voila, there they are. I'd say they look really good. There's another look at them. And there's the side we haven't seen yet. Now I purposely left that finish on the bottom of the tote and I'll tell you it looks like black spray paint. So this sure would have been a lot easier just to coat it with black spray paint, put some lacquer over it and be done with it. But uh, this looks a lot better. And there they are nestled in with the rest of the parts that go to that nasty number five. Seven videos done. I've gone through all the parts. Started with the bottom, the frog, Iron, iron cap, lever cap, small parts, tote and knob. So I didn't do any weird stuff. I didn't do lapping. I didn't replace uh, lateral adjustment levers or other unique things that could be done. Those will be subject to separate videos that will come sometime in the future. So on your next old bench plane that's got hardwood tote and knob, you know what to do. They can turn out looking just fine. This old rusty number five is going to be a giveaway in December, so keep your eye out for that video. It will be in the next month or so. That's the last in the series of uh, seven videos I did on restoring a complete bench plane, all the parts, all the details. And uh, I hope you enjoyed some of it. If you did, if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up. That's it for today. It's time for supper. Bye.